One thing I get asked all the time by people is, what axe should I buy? I can't tell you that, but what I can tell you are a few guidelines to take into consideration when buying an axe. Now, if anybody ever tells you you need to buy this axe, that's the axe for you, they're wrong. They're simply wrong. An axe is like a pair of shoes. I might put them on and absolutely love them. But then you put them on and you get blisters and your feet hurt and you're like, these things suck. Same goes for an ax. I might use it and absolutely love it and then you try it out and it's just not working right for you. Lucky for you though, today, that's all gonna change. I'm gonna give you some guidelines around buying an ax, what to look for, and if you're totally new to this, say you're coming to a class or you're just getting into the bushcraft world, what, what do I need? What should I think about? Like what, I don't even know much about an ax. We're gonna fix it all. I promise, we're gonna fix it all right now. Most important thing that you need to be honest with yourself when it comes to making a decision to buy an axe is so what is the purpose of buying this axe? That really falls in my mind into three different categories. And I break them categories down into specific, fire creation, and utility. So let's start with the specific category. So when I talk about that, what I'm talking about is that you need an axe for a very specific reason. And that might be just splitting firewood. That's the only reason you need this axe. Or you might need the axe for on the back of your ATV because you're clearing trails or creating trails. So there's axes specific for this stuff. There's splitting malls, there's double bit axes with different bevels on each side. There's all this craziness. So there's a ton of stuff out there, but if that is why you're carrying that, or that's why you're gonna buy an ax to carry, then that is a whole different category of things. But it's important I mention that because some people might have that special need for an ax. But probably most of the people watching this, they're not gonna fall into that category if it's their first ax because they're buying it to go out in the woods with the ax. So you're gonna fall in then one of the next two categories. And the next one we're gonna talk about is fire creation. Now you're not gonna actually make a fire with the ax itself, but if you're buying the ax to primarily use to process firewood. So let's think you're upper peninsula of Michigan, super cold or the boreal forest in the winter. And you know, you're gonna have a lot of dead standing frozen trees and you gotta cut them things down and you gotta buck them up or cut them into sections and then split them up because you need a ton of good firewood to get you through the day and the night. Then that is in itself a category that you need to identify with. And then the third category is the category that I fall into myself, and that is utility category. Now with the utility category, the, the whole uh, mindset around that is you're carrying the ax as a utility tool, a multi-purpose tool that you're gonna get a ton of jobs done with. So it has to be very multi-purpose for you. So you should be able to chop down a tree, split logs, buck logs, but then you should also be able to carve with it, drive in tent pegs, maybe process game if you need to quarter it up, do all these different things with that ax. Now, Honestly, of those three categories, you need to make an honest assessment because it seems very glamorous to right away say, oh, I want my ax to do everything. But maybe that's not what you need. If you're literally gonna just use your ax for that firewood work like I talked about, put yourself in that category because nothing is worse. Nothing is worse than buying an ax or seeing people buy an ax and they strap it on their backpack and never use it. And trust us, we know, us experts, we know because we could tell if the maxes are used or not. So don't be that guy. Okay, so now that we had our three categories laid out, put yourself in one of those categories. It's literally gonna like drive your ax selection just uh, like down. I'm gonna say 80% of it's already like, it's there, okay? Now, what you need to know, and if you don't know this, you need to know this. There are three components to an ax that are gonna change. Those three categories include weight, length, and shape. So let's start with weight. We have lightweight up to heavyweight. Now axes can vary anywhere from a half pound head all the way up to five, six, seven pounds. So just this hunk of metal itself can weigh up to five and six and seven pounds. The main thing that you need to realize when it comes to weight is that the heavier the ax, the more penetration into wood you're going to get. So in simple people terms, what the hell does that even mean? So if we take a five pound chunk of metal and drive it down into the ground, it's gonna probably indent the dirt a good amount. But if I take a one pound and I do the same thing with the same amount of force, it's not gonna drive into the ground as much, or I'm gonna have to put more force behind it in order to make it equal what that five pound weight did. Same goes for an ax. So when it comes to weight, it depends on how big of lumber you are going to be cutting. The bigger the lumber, typically the heavier the ax. The smaller the lumber, the lighter the ax. So back to our purpose-driven decisions that we talked about earlier. If I was cutting down just nothing but big lumber to build a cabin, okay, so 12, 14, 20 inch logs for some crazy reason, 
I would want a big heavy ax to be able to do that because I'm gonna get more force with that. It's gonna cut deeper into those trees and allow those trees to come down a little bit easier. But if I was gonna just be pointing a stick like this, there's no reason I need five pounds of ax weight to cut into this thing. One, two pounds, even a half pound would probably do it. Next, ax shape. Now when I say ax shape, I'm not really even talking too much yet because this is a little bit more advanced of the actual shape. You can see what this looks like compared to this one. Um, I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is what the actual bit shape is. So what I mean by bit shape is how steep that bit is. And the bit on an ax is this sharp part right up through here. So an ax can have either a very sharp bit meaning that it is very pointed, okay, very steep, or it can also have a very thick bit. So it can be really big like this. So where my fingers are touching, that's the sharp part of the ax, at least the, the fake ax we're playing with right now. So if I would take something like this, a big thick ax bit, and I would drive this down into a stump, it's gonna push that wood apart really quickly because once this sharp section gets in and starts to drive, the rest of the ax acts like a wedge and pushes that wood apart. So, if we're splitting up firewood, that would be a great, great scenario. But then if we take an ax that's very narrow, okay, so it looks like this, super sharp at the tip, and then very thin through the rest of the bit, and I would drive that down into a piece of wood, it's not gonna push the wood apart as much, maybe it won't even split, maybe the ax will just get jammed inside there. So that wouldn't be a good option for splitting out wood, but if I wanted to carve something, that is gonna be the perfect decision. That very thin bit is gonna allow me to just skim right across the top of whatever I need to carve. If I would take that thicker bit though that is more like this shape, over exaggerated of course, and try to carve something, I'm just not gonna be able to get in there because the sides are starting to hit it and it's just not fine enough to do the carving I need. Now if you take a look at these two axes, the ax that I'm jiggling right now has a very thin bit compared to the ax that I'm jiggling right now. So this ax on this side is going to split wood a little bit better than this ax. And this ax, because it's thinner, is gonna do a much better job carving than this ax. Hope you get my point. So understanding that bit shape is very, very important for the fact, again, if we think about the purpose that we're carrying the ax, if you're carrying it primarily for utility, let's say, and you know you're gonna be just splitting some small sticks, but then you're gonna be carving points, maybe carving cook systems with it, shaving off bark, you're gonna want that thinner bit, you're gonna want something that's more like a knife blade. But if you're going to be in the woods, literally chopping down trees and splitting wood the primary amount of time, then of course you're gonna want that thicker bit, you're gonna want something that's gonna help split out the wood just that much faster. And lastly, is handle length. Now when it comes to handle length, what I can say without pulling out my scientist coat and stuff like that is that the longer the handle length and heavier the head, the more force we can generate with that ax. And that is important to just understand that, that we, how much force do you generate depends on how long the handle is. And I say that because of this simple fact, that if we break ourselves down in them categories again, so we say the fire making, that we're chopping a lot, compared to utility of carving, we don't need a lot of force when carving, we don't need a lot of force when driving in a tent peg, we don't need a lot of force when splitting out small lumber. But we do need a lot of force when chopping down a tree or splitting firewood. So that alone, just thinking about that, should start to help you decide on, okay, should it be a really long handle being 36 inches, or should it be a real short handle like 19 inches? And with that said, I think that it is important though, because now most people are probably gonna find themselves in that range of 23 to about 12, 14 inches. And, and how do we make a good decision in that range? So here's my recommendation for that. If you are carrying the ax for utility purposes and you're going to just be traveling around with it a lot, you're gonna be splitting stuff, all that utility stuff, you know what I'm talking about at this point. 12 to 19 inches is gonna be most ideal. I can't tell you, again, specific because it's gonna depend on you. I'm a big guy and this ax handle itself, small, it, it just doesn't, it, it's fine. It works great for me. Everything I need to do from chopping to splitting to carving, this thing works great. And this handle is 15 inches. If you're in that fire making category, that you have your ax specifically for fire making, I would say 19, up to 23 is going to be good, but if you're hardcore fire making, maybe just a little bit longer, start to get close to 30 inches. 
<laughs> and if you are still like, I have no idea. Now you have me more confused than ever. Just think about this. Think about your purpose. Is it more utility? Is it more fire creation? We're not even gonna talk about the specialty stuff. And if it's fire creation, how big of a wood are you actually gonna be cutting and processing and how much of it? That's directly going to impact weight, the heavier the head and the longer the handle. The further on the utility side you go for all those little camp chores with minimal type chopping and cutting is going to reduce that head size and reduce that handle size. And if you find yourself somewhere right in the middle of all of that, you think you're, I'm gonna be doing all of that and I really need something, then you wanna find something middle of the road. So best middle of the road option that I can give you is you're gonna want something around a two and a half pound head with about an 18, 19 inch handle. That's gonna just fit most people. And that's it, that is my rundown, my overlying topics and things to take into consideration when you want to buy an ax. I think that's gonna help a lot of people because I know this is a question I get asked all the time. Again, I can't give you super specifics on this exact ax because they are, they're literally like shoes. Um, I'll tell you a quick little story. I had this ax and this is like my favorite trapper's hatchet that I use all the time and it fits all my needs, that utility category needs. I put a longer handle on this. I thought it was gonna be a little bit better for chopping and then what I realized was I didn't like the longer handle for the rest of the work I did. I put the old handle back on and now it's staying like that. So um, it literally, it's just like the flavor. What, what is going to make you most happy and what's gonna be most comfortable for you? That's what it comes down to. But I think if you look at those categories, look at the different parts of an ax, you can narrow that stuff down really easily, really simply, and have yourself a great quality tool. And again, don't just put it on your backpack and not use it. Force yourself to use it, because once you learn how to use an ax, you'll love it for life. This was Dan Wolwak with Coal Cracker Bushcraft. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, check us out at coalcrackerbushcraft.com. And until the next video, I'm pumped to, I wanna go use my ax right now. Stay in the woods.